Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and today we have a very fun video. We are going to be talking about 15 fantastic perennials that do really well in southern gardens. Now, remember we are North Carolina, a zone 7B. We are in the Piedmont of North Carolina. So we have the heat and the humidity just like my other southern neighbors. But just because these plants do really well in the south does not mean that they are not going to excel and perform magnificently well in other parts of the country. It just means that they can handle all that the crazy weather conditions that the south has um, tries to throw at these poor plants because it does take a really tough plant to survive here in the south. So if you want any more information about these 15 perennials, just check out the link below and it will give you all sorts of great information, more pictures, more you know, in-depth detail on these plants. Also, I will have lots of graphics, so feel free to take screenshots and add these plants to your gardening journal. So when you visit your local garden center come this spring, summer, and fall, you can look for them specifically by name. Now, without further ado, we are going to jump right on in here. The first one, and this is in no particular order, the first one on the list is the ultraviolet phlox. Now, this is an absolute showstopper. It gets its name rightly so because it has these neon purple blooms that just stand out and pop in the garden. We grew these both here at the nursery and in our own personal garden and they were rock star performers. The phlox is going to be hardy in zones three to eight. To grow it the best, you need full sun. So that means a minimum of six hours of direct sunlight. These are sun loving plants. Also, phlox has typically been plagued by powdery mildew. This particular um, cultivar was chosen because it shows a high resistance to the powdery mildew. Also, though, when you plant it, make sure to give it a little bit of elbow room so that it can have plenty of room for that um, air to circulate around it. Because here in the south, our nights never really cool down as far as temperature wise and humidity wise. So that's why we love the ultraviolet because it's really resistant to that powdery mildew. It does attract the butterflies and the hummingbirds and your bees, all your pollinators, and it is a native plant to North America. So make sure you add ultraviolet to your shopping list come this growing season. Now next for my shade gardeners, we have a gorgeous one. This is pulmonaria, um, a type of pulmonaria. It is spot on. Spot on, all you have to do is look at a picture of it and you know exactly how it got its name. It has these beautiful green leaves with creamy white spots on it. Pulmonaria is going to be naturally both deer and rabbit resistant because its leaves have a lot of texture to it. They're almost hairy um, and so the little critters don't like that on their lips and so they tend to stay away from it. This is going to be a part shade to shade plant. So no more than four hours of direct sunlight, preferably morning sun, not afternoon sun. Spot on is fantastic also because it has beautiful salmon pink blooms that will transition into a really rich blue um, shade of a flower as it matures. So on the same plant, you will have pink and blue blooms all at the same time. Roughly, it's going to be about 16 inches tall and 20 inches wide. It definitely is a wider than it is tall plant. Makes a fantastic specimen in the front of front or middle of your garden, just depending on what you have in there. Um, it is just wonderful. Now, in the wintertime, you may find that you have to kind of trim back from winter into spring, trim back some of the dead leaves like you would a euchara once it starts to emerge. Super simple, but that spot on is absolutely a gorgeous plant. Easy peasy. Just let it go. Next on the list, Amsonia string theory. Now, if you are not familiar with any Amsonia, this is about one of the easiest perennials to grow. It is a native plant to North America. Therefore, it is um, just a rock star. It performs magnificently well. String theory is really fun because it is a really kind of a compact habit to it really beautiful periwinkle blue flowers early in the spring. It's going to be one of your first blooming perennials in the garden. It has a real feathery um, foliage to it. It is gorgeous. 
low maintenance. Um, it is deer resistant, so you don't have to worry about that if those are problems in your yard. Um, and then for the after it blooms, the, really the only maintenance that you need to do with the plant is if you can cut it back to about six to eight inches from the ground, it will regrow and be nice and thick and compact. And then at that point, you have got gorgeous foliage for the rest of the growing season in your garden. It's absolutely fantastic. Zones four to nine, again, very versatile. It's only gonna be about 22 inches tall, but 36 inches wide. So nice, nice presence in your garden, um, extremely low maintenance. Love the Amsonia. And then of course, in the fall, it gives you gorgeous color because that really rich green foliage turns to this kind of this golden color. Magnificent, works into your fall garden just effortlessly. It is wonderful. All right, moving on to the next one is one of my favorites. This is, it, I would say an oldie, but a goodie, but it's not really that old. This is lemon meringue Baptisia. Now, I have had lemon meringue in our personal garden for four or five years now. And again, this is one of those really low maintenance, no fuss kind of plants, but it gives you gorgeous color early in the spring. Now, Baptisia will come in a thousand different colors. Lemon meringue obviously gets its name um, from the color that it is, because it is this gorgeous yellow, um, kind of a soft buttery lemon color. It is gorgeous. It is hardy in zones four to nine, very, very versatile. And it's basically gonna be a three feet by three feet. Has this beautiful kind of a vase-like habit to it with these beautiful yellow spikes on it. Again, relatively early in the spring season. It is a fantastic plant. You can do a little bit more shade on this one. So it's gonna be a part sun to full sun situation. So you need a minimum, I would say, of like five hours of sun on up to the whole day. Ours gets sun up to sundown and handles it like a champ. Not a problem, it attracts butterflies. It is bee friendly. Again, it is deer resistant. Once you get your lemon meringue established, it is pretty drought tolerant because it does have a really long, deep tap root. So once it's established, very drought tolerant, but because it has that really deep root system, it does not move well. So kind of plan where you wanna have it in your garden, and then just leave it alone. In the late fall, once you get a hard freeze, you're gonna cut it to the ground. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Sorry. <laughs> I just couldn't resist. I just had to say it. Next on the list, this is uh, wild berry euchre. Now, euchres again are an absolutely fantastic perennial that do really well in both the sun and the shade. In the south, people go, well, you know, euchres are just, they're problematic, they don't grow well. Wild berry does really well here for us. It does great in containers, you can put it in the landscape. I personally have had the best luck with my euchras when I put them in a container. They can live there for years and years and years and just grow massive. Um, and you're gonna want wild berry to be around for a long time because of the color. It is just an absolutely gorgeous shade of purple, almost kind of a little bit of an iridescent color to it. It is gonna be hardy in zones four to nine. And like most euchras, it's gonna be kind of short and wide, only 14 inches tall, 20 inches wide, really well. It is an evergreen, so you're gonna have color year round with this plant. Um, and then come, when you're coming out of winter, going into spring, you will just trim up the outer leaves as that new foliage emerges. And it does really well here because it is a native plant. So wild berry is another gorgeous plant to add to the front of your, um, your garden, or like I said, put it in a container and then you can kind of move it around to where you wanna put it. The next perennial on our list is Summer Song Fire Finch Echinacea. To know echinacea is to love echinacea because once it is established in your garden, it is absolutely wonderful. It loves the heat. It handles our um, humidity like a champ. It is a native plant to North America. It does really well. Fire Finch is really fun because it has all these various shades of reds, oranges, and even pinks within the same plant. 
all on that same plant, you've got these gorgeous colors. The blooms will be about three and a half inches wide, so it's a nice big presence. Um, these do great in containers. You can put them, of course, on the border of one of your gardens because they're only going to be about 16 inches tall and 18 inches wide. So it's not going to be a huge um, domineering presence in your garden. So definitely in the front or the middle of your border, depending on you know other plants that you have in there. This will be a part to full sun situation. Again, minimum of five hours. And then once you have it established, it really doesn't require a whole lot of water. It's pretty self-sufficient. It is deer resistant. And then all your pollinators love them. Of course, your bees and your butterflies. And then if you leave your old, your old flower heads on your plant, those will turn into seeds. And then in the fall and winter, the birds love to come and eat those seeds off of your, um, your spent flower heads. So if you, don't, if you want to attract the birds, don't deadhead them. And they have gorgeous, your finches will love these plants. Once it's established, drought tolerant, easy peasy, gorgeous color with summer song fire finch. If you've noticed that your garden needs a little bit of pizzazz, a little punch of color in the fall, then I've got the plant for you. This is Fall in Love Sweetly, and this is a Japanese anemone. They really, you know, hit their stride and start to bloom in that late summer, early fall, and Sweetly really does live up to its name because it's got those beautiful kind of rich rose colored blooms and it's a double bloom. It makes a huge impact in your garden. This is going to be hardy in zones four to eight. Again, part sun to full sun, about 26 inches tall with a 30 inch spread on it. That 26 inches will include your blooms. So before, you know, in the spring and then early summer, midsummer, you're just going to have this beautiful mound of gorgeous foliage. And then your blooms will start to appear, like I said, in late summer, early fall. Um, it is going to attract your butterflies. It is deer resistant rabbit resistant, they will naturally naturalize. So over time, they will spread in your garden. They are not an overbearing or invasive um, plant at, by any means, but they're definitely ones that, that will spread. So give them some room to grow, but you will love this sweetly Japanese anemone. If you have been gardening for any amount of time, you know in the South, without a doubt, one of the staples in our yards Daylilies, fantastic, easy peasy. If you've never added a perennial to your garden, a daylily is a great way to start because these things, I tell you, they could live through like a nuclear holocaust. They are just indestructible. They do fantastic. And to the first one that I would recommend that you add to your garden is going bananas because going bananas is going to be, again, I'm kind of medium size, of a daylily, it's only going to be 22 inches tall, 24 inches wide, and it is a re-bloomer. So it will put out a second flush of blooms for you. Has a really nice, sweet little smell to it, and it's a nice kind of a banana, light yellow. It's not a harsh yellow, so it will play well with other colors in your garden. Daylilies, of course, have very little maintenance required of them. Low water needs, super easy, will attract your butterflies and your hummingbirds. Very bee friendly, rabbit resistant, um, and just a really simple, even if you have the worst soil in the world, put a daylily in, daylily in there and it will do fantastic. So the um, going bananas daylily is a fantastic one to um, add to your garden. Nice big blooms, about four inches um, in size of those. The next one is one of my favorite new introductions of this year. We got to trial it last year. Walters Gardens um, sent us some of these plants to try out. And without a doubt, it's one of my favorites. So don't tell the other hibiscus, but Edge of Night Hibiscus is one of my absolute favorite perennials because it is absolutely stunning. These are perennial hibiscus. Unlike your tropical hibiscus, these will return every single year faithfully. They love the heat and humidity. They do really well here. But Edge of Night is new in that it has that beautiful dark, dark foliage, almost a burgundy kind of color of a foliage with those neon pink blooms on it. It is stunning. I have them in our trial garden, kind of behind this greenhouse. 
I'm gonna add some over at our house and our gardens between some firelight hydrangeas and little lime hydrangeas because that beautiful pink color will just play well with other plants wonderful now this is going to be a little bit on the smaller side than some of the other hibiscus It's only going to be three and a half feet tall and it's going to be four and a half feet wide so it's going to be a little squatty little thing right covered in blooms does really well hardy end zones four to nine it is going to be a full sun to part sun situation again you need to have at least five hours for you to get those gorgeous blooms on it it is deer resistant, but again, your hummingbirds, your bees absolutely love them. We have bumblebees all over our hibiscus every year. It is a fantastic plant. And again, this is native to North America. I will say here in the South that we have noticed that the Japanese beetles do tend to like your perennial hibiscus. So you will just need to take measures to protect your hibiscus from those pesky little critters. Um, and then come late fall, for us in the South, I've always just cut mine down once we have our first hard freeze and they have done great. If you're in a colder climate where you have a lot of um, snow coverage all year round, you may want to wait and cut your hibiscus back late winter going into spring. But for us in the South, before I knew better, I just always cut mine down to the ground in, in um, late fall and they have done great. The next plant on our list, without a doubt, absolute classic a hosta you've got to have a hosta in one of your top favorite perennials in the garden so today we're going to talk about diamond lake diamond lake is going to be a huge plant it is going to be only about 17 inches tall but it's going to grow up to 45 inches wide huge and i love diamond lake because it is a blue hosta so when we say a blue hosta it is that really deep green has those blue hues to it absolutely stunning and gorgeous so not only is diamond lake a wide hosta but the um, leaves on it are huge as well because it has to have something to bulk up this presence right so those leaves can get actually nine inches wide and 11 inches long it is what we call um, has these really heavy margins in it again so that helps some as far as kind of deterring the deer away from it it's not going to say that it's deer resistant but if you have a hosta that has more of a texture to it that tends to help a little bit on that part it is hardy in zones three to nine it is just an absolutely gorgeous one it's going to be about a medium growth rate so you're going to have to give it a little bit of time for it to come into its own and because it is that deep blue green color of a hosta you're going to want to put this in the shadiest part of your garden the darker the hosta the more shade it needs the lighter the hosta the more sun it can take so diamond lake being a blue hosta definitely needs um, just dappled sun definitely not any hot afternoon sun here in the south it will fry and it will <laughs> it will not look very good so make sure you put your diamond lake in an area dappled sun if it gets a little bit of morning sun it can handle that um, but you know you can put this with your ferns and your hellebores and your other hostas absolutely fantastic but yes and uh as a side note, Diamond Lake is the hosta of the year from Proven Winners this year. So make sure to add that into your garden this year. Next on the list is a fun plant that I grew up as a child knowing exactly what this plant was, a red hot poker. But this is not my mama's red hot, hot poker. This is Backdraft. Backdraft is an absolutely gorgeous, deep, orange kind of an ombre color to it so it will the orange goes up the bloom stalk and the older um, flower petals on it will kind of turn a little bit of a yellow color to it so it has this ombre effect to it absolutely gorgeous it is only going to be about three feet tall two and a half feet wide again i remember my mama's red hot pokers and they were bigger than I was. This is gonna be a nice petite um, nephophia that will stay in your garden really well. For us in the South, it will basically be kind of a, um, an evergreen. I have, you know, here we are in the winter time and mine in the garden is still very green. So what I will do in come 
probably March for us is once I start to see maybe a little bit of new growth just about to begin to happen. I will trim back some of those older leaves on it to allow all the new growth to come out. But it is a fantastic, um, it just kind of blooms all season long. It gives a really fun different texture to your garden with those spikes on it. Fantastic is a medium growth rate but it is deer resistant and rabbit resistant. The butterflies, the hummingbirds love it. It is very bee friendly, um, it, but just a really nice long bloomer with that gorgeous color to it. Fantastic, love it. It's one of those classics, but it's been updated and it's a gorgeous addition to your garden. Next is a really fun one. I love this. This is Banana Cream 2 Shasta Daisy. It is, again, a very long blooming, sun loving, heat loving, doesn't care about the humidity, performs like a champ in our southern gardens, but it is this gorgeous Shasta Daisy that takes the classic Shasta Daisy color and then just twist it just a little bit. So Banana Cream um, 2 is the improved version of Banana Cream. It has these gorgeous flowers that emerge a real buttery banana cream of a yellow. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think I said that right. They emerge like a banana yellow color and then they turn to a cream, I should say. So on the same plant, you will have different shades of yellow and a creamy white. Hence the name banana cream, like just like the banana cream pie. These are going to be hardy in zones five to nine, 24 inches tall, 22 inches wide. Now, I will share with you um, from my learning, uh, growing pains is that these do not like to have wet feet. Yes, they need some water, but they do not like to sit in consistently moist, damp soil. They'll rot, they'll die on you in a heartbeat. I learned the hard way on a couple of these plants. So they like to be moist, but in well draining soil. So if you have heavy clay soil like we do, make sure either you plant it on a slope or that you amend your soil so that with some like soil conditioner so that it drains really, really well. Do not put it in an area that stays soggy wet because um, they will not respond really well at all. Um, but just a gorgeous plant, huge presence. The plant itself for us in the south is also like a semi-evergreen. I don't have a lot of top foliage, but I can clearly see where my plant is. So even in the winter, I do have a little bit of a presence of the plant. And I will tell you that even this past November, this little guy was still blooming its head off. So there you go. Banana cream too is a great plant. In fact, it makes such a great um, cut flowers. So bring a little bit of the sunshine indoors with banana cream too. The next one on the list, again, is an absolute classic plant. We all know Monarda, bee balm, right? But in the past, Monarda, um, you know, it is a native plant in North America, but those older varieties that maybe you grew up with, they would be really tall, really gangly. They got powdery mildew every single summer, um, and it just became a nuisance. But you love it because it attracts those hummingbirds to your garden. Well. Here we have Leading Lady Raspberry. You will know that it gets its name from that color. It is an absolutely gorgeous raspberry color and it's nice and petite. It only gets 14 inches tall, but 28 inches wide. We here at, at Creekside have been a little leery about some Monarda, just being honest with you. And Walters sent us some samples this past summer. And without a doubt, this raspberry outperformed any other Monarda that we um, have ever tried before. I literally did nothing to it all season long. I put it in the ground about March and left it alone and it just took off. The soil was absolutely horrid clay soil that I put it in and it just performed its head off, did fantastic. So this is one that we are excited about and excited to offer our customers. Obviously it is native, it attracts the butterflies and the hummingbirds. It is deer resistant because it has that um, that kind of that minty scent to it. So they tend to stay away from it, but just this nice petite size works really well, especially in small garden areas. And if you can do it in a mass planting, oh man, talk about a showstopper and an eye catcher. Leading Lady Raspberry is definitely one to choose from. 
No list of must-have perennials would be complete without a perennial grass. I am a huge fan of perennial grasses because they add such a different texture and contrast and movement to your garden. So today we are focusing on Cheyenne Sky. This is a type of panicum grass, does really well here in the south. Gorgeous color, it's gonna be about three feet tall and only one and a half feet wide. So nice and kind of narrow and skinny, but brings that great dimension to your garden. When we get some breezes, it moves. It's just gorgeous. It is hardy in zones four to nine. It is gonna be full sun. So you need to have, I would say, at least a minimum of six hours all the way up, you know, to sun up to sun down on this. It is a native plant, which is always a great addition to add to your garden. And for my folks that live on the coast, this is a salt tolerant plant. So if you live along um, the ocean, the coastline here in the south, maybe sometimes you struggle finding salt tolerant plants. Cheyenne Sky is salt tolerant, um, so you can absolutely add that to your gardens. It is gorgeous in a mass planting. So go for it. And then in the fall, it will take on these kind of reddish purplish hues to it. Really beautiful, um, just a fantastic plant that will give you not only gorgeous color and movement in the spring and summer, but then in the late summer, early fall, you've had this beautiful fall interest with it as well. And now rounding out our top 15 plants that do really well here in the south, it is Midnight Masquerade Pinstemon. This is a fantastic perennial that loves the sun, super easy to take care of, and that will give you absolutely gorgeous, not only foliage color, but beautiful blooms as well. This will get to be a nice good size in your garden. It gets 40 inches tall, 32 inches wide, and it is hardy in zones three to eight. Now, this is definitely again going to be one for the full sun because if you put it in a little bit of a shadier condition, you're not going to have that gorgeous um, deep, rich purple um, foliage color that you would get if it were in the full sun. Now, because of the beautiful um, purple flowers on their spikes, those are just absolute magnets for both the hummingbirds and the bees. Um, it is an early summer bloomer, super easy to take care of. It is native, another native plant here to North America, and it does really, really well. It has low water needs. You really don't have to worry about it too much. You can just kind of put it in your garden and let it go. And if, I don't know if you're like me, but that is just like the perfect kind of plant that you can kind of plant it and forget it and just enjoy its beauty. But it is really um, just a fantastic plant. It is um, just has a really full kind of presence to it where other penstemons are not quite as vigorous and full and thick. Midnight Masquerade is an absolutely fantastic perennial to add to your garden. I hope that you have found this interesting. I hope that you have found at least one perennial that has kind of piqued your interest and that you are ready to add to your garden this season. Make sure that you take those notes in your garden journal so that way when you get to your local garden center, you can ask for these plants specifically by name. But as always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.